Let's sing it one time. Are you ready? As Brother Shambach comes tonight. Amen. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. Some of you have a puzzled look on your face, wondering, where am I? You're in church tonight. This is what you call having church. I want you to open your Bible tonight, please, if you will. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 11. This is an unusual story in this 11th chapter of 1 Samuel. First verse, then Nahash the Ammonite. He came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, oh, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for reproach upon all Israel. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days' respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel, and then If there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. A sad story. But it gets juicy here. Let me drop down. Oh, no, let me just continue to read. Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. 
And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coasts of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people. And they came out with one consent. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were three hundred thousand. And the men of Judah, thirty thousand. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow, by the time the sun be hot, you shall have help. And the messengers came and showed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Bow your hearts with me and let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of the Holy Scriptures, and I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost will mantle every soul in divine presence. Everyone that's watching by television, let that anointing destroy the yoke in their life. Anoint our ears with ear salve that we may hear. Quicken our hearts and let that word fall on good ground, and let us all become doers of the word. Let this be a night of receiving. Lord, do it again. Don't allow one soul to leave this place disappointed, but let them leave knowing that they have received what they've come for. Let every need be satisfied in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody shouted, Amen. Amen. And Amen. This is an unusual story. I don't believe I ever heard a message preached from this particular text. But it has to do with... And when I read these names in the Old Testament, I'm glad my mom named me Bob. Nahash. How would you like to be called Nahash? Or Jabesh Gilead. But this is a story about a people of God, a composite picture of God's people who were troubled. They are at the bottom. There is no hope. There is no way out. And they are going to the enemy, Nahash the Ammonite. The Ammonites were constant enemies of Israel. And it's unheard of that any Israeli would go to an Ammonite for help. But when you're in trouble and your back is against the wall, you will look for any way out. And Jabesh Gilead went to Nahash the Ammonite and asked for help. Will you make a covenant with us? Allow us to be your slaves and your servants. We will serve you. We cannot even feed ourselves. And the reply that Nahash gave was, and I believe every one of you caught it when I read it, Nahash the Ammonite, in verse 2, answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for reproach upon all of Israel. Let me throw out a warning to every one of you who are children of God. You never go to the enemy for help. 
That devil is a thief. He comes to steal, he comes to kill, and he comes to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. You never strike a deal with a devil. You never make a deal with an enemy. But I am not going to find fault with these people. When you get down and out, you possibly will try to do anything to feed your family. And here when they sent messengers back to Saul, this is when Saul was anointed by God. Saul was a great king during this time. During this time when the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. But there came a time later when the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. But this is when the Spirit of the Lord was upon him and Saul rallied together 330,000 men who were going to go down and bring deliverance to Jabesh Gilead. No man cared for my soul was the cry of David. And there are people out in that world crying, is there anybody to help? And here we are, the church, sitting in our upholstered pews behind the stained glass windows saying, let them come in on the inside. But God says, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Can you raise your hands and shout amen with me? And I am using as a text the remark that Saul gives to the messengers. He said, go back. Go back and tell Jabesh Gilead tomorrow. This is the seventh day. They asked for seven days respite so they could send messengers throughout all the land of Israel for help. Nobody wanted to help. Nobody cared for them until Saul put the fear of God in them by giving them an illustrated sermon and telling him what he's going to do if they don't drop what they're doing and follow him. I, that's my kind of man. Either follow me or else. And he says, you go back to Jabesh Gilead with this message tomorrow. That's the seventh day. By the time the sun be hot. You folks living here in Las Vegas, you know what it is to have a hot sun in July. Tomorrow, by the time the sun be hot, you shall have help. And that's what I come to Las Vegas to tell you. You that are watching by television, help is on the way. I don't care what your problem is. I don't care how low you are. I don't care who gave up on you. I come to tell you I see a ray of hope. Victory shall be yours. This is your night for a miracle. Don't give up. Hang in there. Hold on. The hotter it gets, you're playing right into the hands of the devil. Your day of victory is come. Can you raise your hands and shout amen? God has a remedy. God has an answer to your problem. You're here tonight under direct orders of the Holy Ghost. And we have an answer for you. And that answer is Jesus Christ. He has a miracle in His hand. All you have to do is reach out and take hold of it. Hallelujah. If you don't believe it, when you get to heaven, ask Shadrach. Ask Meshach. Ask Abednego. Here they were faced with a decision. Either bow down and worship an image when you hear the sound of music. Because it's a decree of Nebuchadnezzar. You either bow or you're going to burn. And they declared, no, if we bow, we will burn. But we refuse to bow down to any false god. There is only one God, and Him only will we serve. 
These are men, young men that were determined. They're not going to compromise with the world. They're not going to compromise with the government. They're not going to compromise with a devil. But they're going to take their stand and say there is only one God and Him only will we serve. No compromise. That king says, you either bow or you're going to burn. He said, oh no. O king, we got all the options covered. God, God, either he will deliver us or he won't. That's covering every base. Sometimes, you know, you've got to come right down to that bottom rung. Either God's going to do it or he ain't going to do it. But you mark this one thing down, I ain't bound down to no false God. One thing we do know, he's going to deliver us out of your hand. We don't know whether he's going to deliver us out of that fire, but he's going to deliver us out of, that, out of your hand. We're not going to bow and we're not going to burn. God said to Jesus, get on down there in that fire. And you know, the devil played right into the hands. The king got so mad, he said, heat it seven times hotter. If he hadn't have done that, maybe... Uh, Jesus never would have got in it yet. But he waited until it got hot. Too hot to handle. Seven times hotter. And when they were tied up and thrown in, Jesus was already in there. And took the burn out of the fire. Are you listening to me? The only thing that was burned was their bonds. The hair was not singed. Their clothes were still intact. Still had the sandals on their feet. And when the king looked in, he saw Shadrach, he saw Meshach, he saw Abednego, and he saw, uh-oh, saw somebody else. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One, three, two, four. He went back frustrated and said to his commander, how many did we put in? He said, three. He said, I see four. And the fourth one, the fourth one, the fourth one is like unto the Son of the living God. I come to tell you, when it gets too hot, you are not alone. You've got somebody by your side. Turn up the heat. Help is on the way. Your miracle is nigh unto you. It's not time to give up now. Hang in there. Shout yes. Woo. God knows how much you can stand. He knows how much pressure you can take. Remember that little widow woman? Buried her husband. Got caught in the middle of a famine. You know the story. That old prophet of God looked up into the sky and said, You ain't going to rain until I tell you to. That's a man of God. That's a prophet. I mean, he shut the heavens up. You ain't raining until I tell you. Shut them up for seven years. And then he set him back down alongside of a stream by a brook. And he said, I'll feed you there. And he sent a raven by. Twice a day, that raven would come by and drop a quarter pounder right in his lap. That's where McDonald's got his idea. You know that from that raven? I mean, he didn't even have to go after it. He just lay there by the brook. He didn't even have to ask for a Diet Coke. He just leaned over and drank the brook. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now, he stayed there a little too long. He drank the brook dry. You know why he drank it dry? Because he told it not to rain. He's the blame. But God still got to take care of the man. So he said, get up from here. He said, I got a woman down there in Zarephath. She'll take care of you. Yes, Lord. Just led to the Spirit. And he gets into Zarephath and he sees a woman out in the field picking up sticks. And he's wondering, I wonder whether that's a, the woman God got prepared for me. And that woman stood up and she saw him coming. And she said, praise the Lord, brother pastor. Praise the Lord, sister. Can you go get me some water? 
Sure will. Wait right here. I'll be right out. Wait, wait a minute. While you're at it, hey, bring me a piece of bread, too, will you? Oh, as the Lord thy God liveth. Haven't you heard about the famine we've been having? Heard about it. He's wanted, got the thing started. He said, you haven't heard about the famine? I lost my husband. Everybody's dying like flies around here. And I just have enough oil in the cruise and enough meal in the barrel for me and my son. He's my only son. I'm out here picking up sticks for the last time. I'm going to make my last fire. I'm going to make my last cake. We're going to sit down together and eat our last meal. Then we're going to lay down for the last time and die. You know what the prophet said? Yeah, this is the right house. It's too hot to handle. It's getting hot now, down to the last. Are you listening? Some of you sitting there when I received the offering, you said, all I got is $10. You blew it. You should have put that $10 in the bucket. Then you're down to being hot. Now God's got to perform a miracle. When you get down to the irreducible minimum, that's when God steps in and says, Now watch me do my thing for you. Hallelujah. Can you raise your hands and shout, Praise the Lord. He said something to that woman. People that live in the flesh won't understand this. Isn't this just like a preacher? He looked at that woman and said, Go in the house and make me a cake first. Isn't that just like a preacher? He's asking for my last dollar I got. You know what the Bible says? She went and did according to the saying of the man of God. She brought him a cake. When that little boy smelled that cake bacon, he come a running. Because he had pains in the stomach. The famine in the land. And she set it down before the pastor, the preacher, the prophet, the evangelist. And he sat there, and the little boy looking at him, do you think that preacher would give him a bite? Not a bit. That preacher sat there and ate the whole thing. And then licked his lips. He said, now, go in and make one for yourself and one for your son. You won't have to share it. There'll be enough for one each. Ah, but listen, when she went in, there was enough meal and enough oil for two more cakes. And that wasn't one, this wasn't a one-time deal. <clears throat> she kept going back to that meal barra. Read your marginal reference for the rest of the famine. One thousand days, a little over three years, every time she kept coming back, there's enough oil and enough meal for two more cakes. While they're dying all around her, are you listening to me? Somebody said to me, why didn't God fill up that barrel? It would have got stale. God just promises daily bread. Come on, shout amen, somebody. God knows how hot it is. Some of you need what I'm saying right now. You struggling. You're dipped into your savings. You don't know how long you can last. I'm telling you to hang in there. God knows. Turn up the heat. Turn up the heat. And when you get stripped to the irreducible minimum, God will rain it out of heaven. He'll let you find it in the ground. He'll drop it out of the drunk's pocket. You'll pick it up while somebody else will lose it. God said, I'll bless you going in, and I'll bless you coming out. Everything you set your hands to, it shall prosper. Raise your hands and shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Whew. I don't believe I could stay here any longer than three days. You folks will kill a preacher around here.
Tomorrow, by the time the sun be hot, you shall have help. When it looks like it's total disaster. Yeah, but you don't know what the doctor said. Doctor said they can't do no more for me. He only gave me three months. Wait till you get down to 72 hours. Hezekiah is the king. All oh, you charismatics, listen to me now. And here comes the prophet. Isaiah. Marches right into the bedchamber of the king unannounced. Not with a positive message of faith. He walks in. He didn't say, God saved the king. He said, God going to kill the king. Walked into his bedchamber unannounced and said, Thus saith the Lord. He didn't say, Good morning. How are you? Thus saith the Lord. Set your house in order. You're going to die and not live. Turn around, walked out. Didn't even say goodbye. That's a prophet, folks. He ain't going to honey it up with his own words. He's just going to do what God said do. Now, after reading a scenario, a scenario like this, I'd say the man's up against it. Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, you're going to die and not live. What's he do? He turns his face to the wall. Read it in the 38th chapter of Isaiah in your devotional time. And when he turned his face to the wall, he said, Oh, Lord, <laughs> oh, Lord, you know how I've served you all the days of my life. He knew he was lying in his teeth. If God told him to get his house in order, it must have been out of order. It's my last night. I'm going to hit you and run tonight, folks. I'm talking to church folks now. I mean, Hezekiah was a good king, but God sent a prophet to tell him to get his house in order. Get your house in order! But you see, when you turn your face to the wall, all you see is your own reflection. It's like looking in a mirror. When you look in the mirror, you're God's gifts to the world. You handsome devil, you. Take somebody else to look at you. As long as he's looking at himself, all he could see was good. But when he rolled over and got the upward look, he saw God. And when you see God, I don't care how holy you are, you a mess. When you see God, it was Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone, for mine eyes have seen the Lord. Hallelujah. When you get a glimpse of Jesus, you won't have to have anybody preach how bad you look. You'll know how bad you look when you see Jesus. Can you shout amen? amen. And when he looked up to heaven, he said, Oh, God. The dead can't praise you, only the living. I'm going to praise you all the days of my life. I love you, Jesus. Remove all my iniquity. I praise you. I exalt you. And you know, God can't stand all that praise. Isaiah's going out the second gate. And God tapped him on the shoulder and said, turn around. Hurry, I'm going back in there and tell him I heard his prayer. Tell him I saw his tears. And tell him I'm giving him ten more years on his life. Whew. He even reversed the prophecy. Somebody prophesied bad over you. You can reverse it by calling on God and showing him your tears and let him hear your cry. Can you shout amen? I don't care how 
how far you have gone. I don't care how backslidden you are. There is a way back. I don't care what kind of sin you have committed. Jesus carried it on Calvary 2,000 years ago. He will restore you. Can you raise your hands and shout amen? Amen. You don't know how close you are to a miracle. Spiritually, financially. What kind of help do you need? Peter was thrown in prison. Read that in the 11th book of, 11th or 12th chapter of Acts. Peter, thrown in prison. He says, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Why didn't God deliver him? He stayed in that prison till after Easter. Herod already killed James with a sword. Now he's got the number one biggie. Peter already put the sentence of death on him. Listen. And when Herod would have brought him forth. And I underlined this in red in my Bible. When Herod would have brought him forth, God waited until Herod would have brought him forth the same night. Wow. God sent an angel. The same night that Herod was going to take his head off. And when the angel walked into his prison cell, what was Peter doing? Now, if that was you or me, we wouldn't be sleeping. We'd be pacing that floor. Where are you, Lord? I wouldn't be in this mess if it wasn't for you. Ever since I've been saved, I've been going through trouble. Look at the mess you got me into now, Lord. Oh, Not Peter. He was asleep. And when the angel come, how many of you ever seen an angel? You know why the rest of you haven't seen them? You go home too early. They don't come out till midnight. Some of you want to get home at 9 o'clock. You read about angels. They don't come visiting till after midnight. It was after midnight when the angel come right into that cell where Peter was and he had to smote him on the side. Get up! Man, he's in a sound sleep. And the moment he awakened, it says automatically the chains fell off of him. Four quaternions of soldiers. They were in a deep sleep. And the chains fall off of Peter. And he don't know it's an angel. He thinks he's dreaming. And the angel said, put on your girdle. That's strange now. How in the world, why do men wear girdles? But what he meant was gird yourself. Put your shoes on your feet. And when God tells you to put shoes on, you're going somewhere. Put shoes on your feet. And the angel said, follow me. We're getting out of here. And Peter didn't have a lick of sense, but follow that angel out. God sent a miraculous deliverance. You said, I don't have a preacher that will lay hands on me. God's got an angel that he'll send to you special delivery. That's the kind of God I'm talking about. I don't care how late the hour is. I'm talking about a God that will liberate you and he'll set you free. Can you raise your hand and shout amen? Amen. Went through one gate, and he come to the iron gate that led out into the city. And it said it opened of its own accord. Now, the angel didn't have to have that gate open to get in. But he's got flesh and blood behind him, following him out. And that gate opened, and when the cold air hit him, he said, of a truth, God done sent his angel and delivered me from the prison. And the angel just, when he's out. I'm talking about a miraculous deliverance. When? The same night. The night you're supposed to die. Turn up the heat. God knows how much you can stand. Peter had the confidence. I was preaching in my church at Newark. I was preaching 
when all of a sudden a little woman come walking down that center aisle. And she come walking with one finger in the air. And I said, now what in the world is she doing? She can't be saluting the flag. And she's heading right for me. And I found out. I said, well, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to find out what she's going to do. And she walked right down to me. She says, pardon me, Pastor. She said, I've never done this in my life before, interrupt the preacher. I said, I'm always the first, Mama. What is it? I was kind of jesting with her. But I'm sorry I did when she told me. And she said, Brother Shambach, please. She said, it's 930. And at 10 o'clock, my son is going to die in the electric chair in Sing Sing prison. I said, oh my God, no. Knocked all the preach out of me. 30 minutes. Electric chair. She said, Brother Shambach, there's something about a mother. Something's built in a mother. When she knows when a son's lying or not. Oh, I'll verify that. My mama knew every time I lied to her. How many of you ever lied to mama? If your hand ain't up now, you lying now, honey. <laughs> but there's something about them mamas. They just got a built-in antenna. You just can't lie to mama. She knows. And, and I, I, I took it on those grounds, you know. But if it wasn't for that, I'd have said, well, look. The jury found him guilty. He said, Brother Schambach, he's in for murder. And I know he didn't commit it. She said, I know that. I, I closed my Bible. I said, folks, I, don't, I can't preach no more. I said, this woman's desperate. I want everybody to stand. Everybody stood with me. And I didn't know how to pray. And then people ask me, do you need the Holy Ghost? I don't know about you, but I sure do. And I started praying in tongues because I didn't know how to pray in English. I had no understanding to pray. But when I started praying in tongues, I could feel like a mantle come on me. And it felt so good what I was saying. He speaketh unto God. And when you pray with the Spirit, your understanding's unfruitful. But when you pray with the understanding, your spirit's unfruitful. And all of a sudden, I, I come out of, out of the Spirit... And I started praying in English, and what I was saying amazed me so much. I said, Holy Ghost, sick him. I said, get a hold of the real killer and make him confess. And when I said that, I was kicking myself inside. And I'm saying, shut up, dummy. The man's already been tried. But you see, that's why I, when, when you don't know how to pray, talk, pray in tongues. The Holy Ghost will pray through you. And it was so amazing to me. I couldn't pray that way in, 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 the, in the natural realm. I couldn't pray that way. And, and I'm still in the Spirit. And I looked at that woman and I said, Mother, look at me. Look at me. And it's about 20 minutes up now. We've been praying for 10 minutes. 10 o'clock, they're going to pull the switch. And I said, Mama, go home. Go to bed. Your son will not die in the electric chair. And I'm kicking myself harder. Shut up, dummy. You've got to come back to church here tomorrow. You're in a revival. I'll tell you, the Holy Ghost will pray through you things that you don't even believe yourself. Better be careful who you get to pray for you. They're laying hands on you, asking God to heal you. And then the next breath they ask you, got your insurance paid up? That's the way we are. Flesh gets in with the Spirit, mixed up with it. Can you shout, praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. I went home, not home. I went to the hotel. I was at the hotel. We didn't live in, in Newark, but I, I lived in the Pennsylvania area then. I stayed in the hotel downtown. I went back, went to the hotel, got up early the next morning. Still half asleep. 
went down to the diner. There's a diner. New York is noted for their diners in New Jersey. And I, I love to have breakfast at a diner. And I, I went down to the diner, but instead, I, I, before I went into the diner, I put a, a nickel in the slot. That's when the Daily News was still a nickel. You remember that, folks? Still a nickel. It's a tabloid type of paper, but it, it's the most read paper in New York. And, and I'm still half asleep, and I, I pulled the paper out, and I saw the headlines, and, and big, bold, black headlines, and, and it, wake, it awakened me. And the headline said, Man's Life Spared from Electric Chair. Story on page three. Woo! I got one of those Pentecostal spasms on the sidewalk. I shouted, I danced, I hollered, I screamed, I went, Glory! Whoopee! I didn't eat no breakfast. I sat on the curb and read page three. I still know what it says. I know the district attorney's name, Mr. Hogan. Remember the name? District Attorney Hogan. Listen to what it says. Last night. When did I tell you that woman interrupted me? 9.30. It said, last night, District Attorney Hogan got a phone call at 9.40. 20 minutes till deadline. And a man on the other end of the line said, Mr. District Attorney, you're burning the wrong man tonight. He said, what do you mean? Who are you? Where are you? He said, never mind who I am. The man you have scheduled to die in the electric chair for the murder of the man you found on the second floor in the South Bronx. You found him in that apartment with his face down with stab wounds and he enumerated them. Gave him some of the things that he saw in that room. He said, who are you? Where are you? He said, I'm on my way into a certain precinct. I'm giving myself up. Mr. Hogan went down himself, interrogated that man early in the morning until 2 o'clock in the morning. He said, my God, man, why did you give yourself up? He said, I never had any intention of giving myself up. But he said, when I called you last night, something got a hold of me. You know when it was? When I said, sick him, Holy Ghost. You can hide from the FBI, but you can't hide from the Holy Ghost. He is everywhere. We can pray here in Las Vegas and we can move God anywhere. Can you shout amen, somebody? Stand to your feet, everybody. Let's shout a little bit. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, by the time the sun be hot, you shall have help. No ifs, ands, buts, maybes, or hope so's. You're going to get help. Turn around and look at three people and tell them, say, Help's on the way. Help is 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 on the way. I said, Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. I said help is on the way. Help is on the way. Hold it. You that are watching by television, don't turn the TV set off. You don't know how close you are to a miracle. All he's waiting is for a little response out of you. What kind of response, preacher? You see that number on your screen? Dial it. Dial it now. Somebody's waiting to pray with you. I found your way out. You may be steeped in drugs. Set free. Tonight is your night for a miracle. Everybody here in the sound of my voice, look at me. Please don't leave yet. Give me a few minutes. 
Souls are being weighed in the balance. God's bringing scales into this building right now. And it's not balanced out. Your sins have weighed down one end. The blood of Jesus needs to be applied. That will even out the scale. You're found wanting. You've been playing with this thing for a long time. Going to church. But there's no change. You can fool the pastor. But you can't fool God. You know there's no change. But I'm here to tell you that God is waiting right here for you now. And I'll guarantee you He will transform your life. I don't care how many times you tried or failed. I'm not going to count tonight. I want you to get out of your seat and come down here and stand. And let me know you're not ashamed to walk down an aisle and come to Christ just like you are. Please don't put... This is the last night of a revival. This is the most dangerous night. You may never get another opportunity to come to Christ. Come. I want you to come. Please don't turn Him aside. If you've never made your peace with God, you're a backslider away from God, come down here now and stand right here in front of me. Let God know you're not ashamed to do that. He wasn't ashamed. Come right down here. That's it. Come right here in the front. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Come on, young folks. I'm going to wait for you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. I'm glad you came tonight. Glad you came, buddy. I'm so glad you're here, sis. Come on. Come on. Sing a song while they come, Brother Rodriguez. All There's over this building. Come. At the cross. Please dial that number. Oh. Dial that number on your screen. Somebody, I feel you in my spirit There's watching this telecast. You're contemplating suicide. Suicide is not the way out. Jesus loves you. He's going to turn it around. Dial that number now. God's going to set you free. Come, 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 come. At the cross. Oh, that's so beautiful. Sing it again. At the cross. People coming to receive Jesus Christ into their life. That's the bottom line to an old-fashioned Holy Ghost revival. That number that's on your screen right now, if you'd like to receive Christ into your life, why don't you dial that number? Or if you have a special need in your life that you want to talk and pray, have somebody pray with you about, dial that number. And I believe that God has a miracle with your name on it. Now, when we go back into the service, I'm going to be calling people forward to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And also, I'm going to be praying a mass prayer for healing. So gather your family around, wherever you're viewing this. If you need a miracle in your life, you'd like to be blessed spiritually, and you'd like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, gather around. And when I pray, you enter in, and I believe that God's going to touch you and deliver you and set you free. The miracle is yours. Thank God for Holy Ghost Revival. How many of you in my audience have never spoken in tongues? Come on down here. You notice I didn't ask you if you wanted it. I said, if you've never spoken in tongues, come on down here. Get in close. Come in close. I love to see you young fellas, I'll tell you. I mean that sincerely. Now they're coming by the hundreds, so I want you in a little closer. Can you get in a little closer? That's it. You church folks, listen. Do you know there's a false Holy Ghost out there? For every genuine, there's always a false. Some people have gotten the Holy Ghost out of their head, and all they speak is words, mama, mama, mama. Because I've had them come into my tent. I've gone in the prayer tent, and I've seen them jerk on their jaws. Ain't nobody had no jaw jerkers on the day of Pentecost. They were all in one room, in one accord, in one place. And the Holy Ghost came on them. He'll use your vocal cords. 
It's your vocal cords that he uses. And it says, out of your belly, not out of your head. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Are you ready? How many of you need a miracle of healing in your body as well? Now, while you do this, the Holy Spirit dropped it in my heart that he's going to heal you while you're here. The important thing is to get the spiritual thing. Now, listen. Divine healing is for the physical body. However, in order to receive it, you have to receive it through the Spirit. Now, some of you won't understand what I'm saying, but this is absolute truth. Anything you receive from God, you receive it through your Spirit. So if I can get you in the Spirit now, are you ready? Every one of you, you in the audience, I want you to stand and I want you to get in on this. Tony, I want you to play that organ in tongues tonight. Play them drums in another language. Play those guitars in another language. Mother Hall, let the Holy Ghost come on them fingers, honey. And I want you to create the atmosphere. You that here that have the Holy Ghost, let it flow out of you. Don't hold it back. Let the Holy Spirit use you. You in front of me, have both of your hands raised and let your spirit reach out to God. I'll break in in a little while and I'm going to command you to receive the Holy Ghost. And when you hear me say, I command you to receive, then I command you to exercise the faith of God and let it flow out of you. You are going to receive... The Holy Ghost tonight. Some of you are Baptists. You're going to be Holy Ghost Baptist tonight. You're going to be Holy Ghost Methodist tonight. I don't care where you go to church. The Holy Ghost is for everybody that has been born again. Go ahead and praise Him now, everybody. Let the Holy Ghost flow. Let Him flow. Cristo Rabakasando Robonda. Karamahasuriki. Shalalamonda. Isata Rabakito, Rimon Shakasatari, Holy Mahasoto, Christo Kosota, Baliman Zonde, Christo Kotasata Rabaha, Rimon Shoto Koto, Robahota, Ribakanse. Receive a double portion of the Holy Ghost. Receive, receive, be healed. Be delivered! Be set free! Receive! A double portion of the Spirit! Una la masanda rabahande Shikara bahari absoto rabaho Dila la bahante Dia rabaho salamanda Ola mahanda la bahasata Riso rabokota Una la mahansanda Ripa kasanda That's it! That's it brother! That's the Holy Ghost! Let him go! That's it! That's it! They're getting filled with the Holy Ghost around here! That's it! Put your hands up and receive it! Receive ye the Holy Ghost! Receive ye the Holy Ghost! Receive ye the Holy Ghost! Oh Lord! Thank you Lord! Well the Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah! The Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah! Holy Ghost is here right now, yeah!
Praise God. Isn't it wonderful to feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right there in your home? Thank God for these videos that we can provide this kind of an atmosphere in your home. And I trust that you've been blessed, saved, healed, or delivered just by being a part of this old-fashioned revival service. Remember now, 24 hours a day, we have a power phone. It is manned by people that know how to pray. If you ever need help, dial that number on your screen. I'd suggest you write it down and put it away somewhere so that you'll know that you'll have it. It's right there at your fingertips. Also, if you'd like to have other information about our ministry, whether you'd like to have Power Magazine, maybe you'd like to write me a letter. My mailing address is on the screen. Just write to me, R. W. Schambach, Tyler, Texas, 75711. That's all the address you need. But I would like to hear from you. If you have any particular prayer requests you want us to pray about, God said, if two of us agree together as touching anything, it shall be done for them of my Father in heaven. And I'll be in agreement with you that God will grant you the desire of your heart. I want to thank you personally for allowing me this time in your home to enjoy Jesus. Remember, until our next time together, whether in one of our live services, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God.